Okay, today we're looking at the Tender Nova. This is the MW5 two pack, not to be confused with the three pack, which is slightly different. Um, basically, it's a mesh based system which allows you to extend or spread your wireless in your house or even your business uh, up to two and a half thousand square feet. So, what basically happens is you get the main node here, which will plug directly into your router, as well as a power socket, and then you'd plug this node into directly a power socket on your wall or an extension cable or something along that line. And what that would then do is allow these two devices, and if you added another, three devices and so forth, to all work together in a whole system. So it spreads the wireless throughout your whole house or business, and you'd be able to walk from one side to the other uninterrupted without losing connection. This item, which is the MW5 2 pack, retails for £89.99. They also have an MW3 3 pack on the market for £79.99, the MW5 S 3 pack for £119.99, and the MW6 3 pack for £159.99. So let's have a look at the packaging. It's pretty straightforward, it says what it is, gives you the model number there, tells you how much coverage it gives you there. Works well with 100 megabytes per second or more optical broadband, covers up to 2,500 square feet, and wall plug design, plug and play. So ideally you just plug it in and away you go. Uh, on the box it shows you obviously the two nodes, the one that plugs directly into the router, the master, and then your slave or secondary node, which would plug directly into your plug socket. On the top of the box it just says tender, on the side you've just got barcodes basically and it says Apple Store and Google Play uh, and on the other side it gives you some more of the specifications. On the bottom of the box you haven't got much on the bottom other than some certifications and stuff like that. On the back of the box it shows you how it basically works so you can see there how it extends the range and tells you a bit more information down here as well as different bits of information about the different models. Also what's interesting is they mentioned the MW2 and the MW12 which are not yet to my knowledge released products. Okay so this is what's in the box. You've got your quick installation guide here which tells you basically well, how to set it up and it's supposed to be a quick installation guide but there is quite a lot there. But the basics is that top part is English, the rest is in all the different languages and it tells you roughly basically how I told you before to set it up. It tells you about how to set it up. It does say that you need to, you know, step one is to um, set it up on an iPhone or an Android uh, device um, so you can change the settings but in reality you could actually skip step one. I found that these tender products can actually, you can go straight to step two as long as you don't mind the wireless settings uh, being set as the defaults which are written on the bottom and in most cases most people never change and you don't need to go in and mess about with any of the settings but obviously you can if you wish. The next sheet of paper is just basically general public license notices which is basically like rubbish what no one ever wants to read and to be honest I'm not going to either. Next you've got your Ethernet cable, and by the looks of it this cable, I'm guessing it's going to be about one and a half metres long, so a little bit shorter than the Ethernet which is a little bit disappointing because I always find it's the power cable that I'm usually uh, shorter length on, I'd rather have a slightly longer power cable than the Ethernet cable because generally you're going to be sitting this right next to your router so your idea is only need to go that far. Uh, where the power cable you could be stretching it all the way from the floor up to on top of a unit. Okay so you've got your two nodes, let's have a look at your primary node or the main node or the master however you want to call it. This is the front so this is the bit that will be facing you, it's got a little LED light there so that usually, if I've, if I've seen on the other ones, it's usually red when it's, uh, sorry, red when it's not connected and green when it is connected. On the sides there is nothing apart from the back. On the back you've got your Ethernet connections uh, as well as power and a reset. When I say Ethernet connections, 
One will go directly to the router, but you can also connect the device directly to it as well. So if you wanted to connect the PC directly to this, you can do with an Ethernet cable as well as it being connected to the router at the same time. So that's handy. Obviously power goes in there. On the top there isn't much other than this little bit of plastic. Let me peel that off for those of you who like it. There you go. And on the bottom it tells you your wireless information. So you can see that the SSID, which is the basically the name, uh, as well as the password, which is there, which is pretty straightforward. And it also tells you the uh, mod number and everything on there. Okay, this is the node, the slave node, or secondary, or whatever you want to call it, node. Uh, it's pretty straightforward again, you've got a little LED light under where it says Nova. Green means good, red means bad, uh, which basically means connection or not. Again, it's got a little bit of plastic on there. On the sides, not much. On what you would class as the bottom, you do have a reset and you also have a LAN connection, which again, you can use what's called a pass-through on this, so you can connect this directly to your PC, uh, or laptop, or whatever device it may be, with an Ethernet cable, and it'll allow you to get connection if you didn't have wireless on it. So that's quite good. I actually have a similar setup like that on one of the other Nova setups, what we did. Uh, on our main PC and we've still got it running to this day and it works as, as if you cable directly into the router but it is actually transmitting wirelessly between the nodes. Also on the bottom you've also got your wireless details again, those should be the same as they are on the master. Then on the back you've got obviously your 3 pin plug and obviously if you're in a different country I'm guessing you'll have a European uh, plug on there as well or instead of, should I say, and it also tells you about the model number and so forth there. Okay, so let's get these set up. Um, so first thing you need to do is plug it in. So use this mains cable I've got here and plug it into the back. So that's pretty straightforward. And if you look on the front, you can see green light on there. And to my knowledge, if I remember right, it will start flashing in a few seconds as if it's searching for the internet. And if it doesn't find a connection after around about 30 seconds to a minute, it will then go red. But as soon as you've got an internet connection on there, then it stays permanently green. Um, so you know when you're connected or not. But this will probably take a few seconds for it to fully boot up. Hence why it's just on green at the moment. But if we probably keep watching, after a few seconds you'll find it starts flashing just like it is now and if I was to leave it a bit longer that would change to red so what I'm going to do now is plug in the Ethernet cable which is coming from my wireless router or in our case our BT Home Hub uh, and you plug it into the WLAN connection from the back which is the one next to the reset button or this reset hole where you would stick something to reset it once that's in, it should then pick up the internet connection and this should then go solid green, but it can obviously take a few seconds. And if I'm right, it'll start flashing quicker, which well, there we go, it is now, and it's gone block green. So this is now connected to the internet. So that bit was quite simple. So two things you gotta do, plug the ethernet cable into the back of it, and then the router, and then plug the power cable. Now we're gonna get the additional node. Yes, I'm setting it up next to each other, but ideally you would set this up at the other side of the building, but obviously so you can actually see how it works. I'm just going to plug it into there. You can see it lights up green on the front. And what you do is give it a few seconds, probably a minute, and then they'll start talking to each other. As you can see, this is now flashing after it started up, which means it's trying to connect up. And as we said, once it goes block green, that means it is connected to the internet. So that would then mean those two are synced up together. And they are pre-synced. So you don't have to set them up in any special way or anything like that. They should both find each other uh, within ease. 
So there you go, it's flashing quick, that means it's connecting up, and that's block green. So those, both of those nodes are now sending out a wireless internet connection. So what you do, you would get your mobile phone or other device, whatever it may be. So you get your mobile phone, you go onto Wi-Fi, and you'd have a look for it. And ours is called Nova B240. So you click on it, it's asking for the password which is actually on the bottom of the unit so make six six eight eight press join and it's connected we are now on the internet Okay, let's test the internet then. So our speed of our internet round here is normally around about 50 megabytes. So we're now connected up to these tender novas. Let's see what sort of speed our internet is. And as you can see, it's going, well it's actually going well above the 50 megabytes per second mark. It's going to around about 57, 58, 57.4 megabytes with an upload of around about 17, 18 megabytes, which is pretty good. If I was to connect up to our main router, which is that one, and check the wireless there, you shouldn't see any drop in speed from when you're testing the Nova kits. And there you go, if anything the Nova kits are actually working out a little bit faster and they were in the high 50s close to 60 megabytes per second where well, we're connected up to our directly to our BT hub and we're only getting around about 50 megabytes per second now. Obviously depending on the speed of your internet this may vary and obviously it depends on where you get your nodes set up. Obviously these you would stretch out further than having them next to each other like I've got set up here. Okay, so if you wanted to set up the wireless on here and change the settings, for example, monitor what's going on, who's using it and so forth, you can download the app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. It's pretty straightforward. Let's let it download. It takes a few seconds. Once it's done, you can open it up. Yes, we want to do that. We want to set it up. It's automatically picking up your connection. Okay, on here, it's straight away, the first thing it's asking, do you want to change the Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password? I don't want to, so I'm going to press done. It doesn't actually give you the option to skip, so this is where you have to change the Wi-Fi name. So I'm going to call it TFT, and password is going to be pass Word. So that's now changing the wireless settings on the actual nodes. And that's creating a Wi Fi connection. Obviously, if you change the settings, you're going to lose your internet connection because you were connected up to the Novas and now you're not. So you're going to have to go back to your settings look for TFT, type in your new password and press join you can see you connected back up and then find your app back in and it tells you how to add other Novas or actual other nodes which uh, allows you to spread your internet connection even further. So it tells you how to place everything, how to power them on, what green means, what yellow means, and what red means. So yellow, I've never seen the yellow, but that means fair connection, move it closer to another node. Um, but there we go. So it's asking us to do one to log in using details. I'm not going to do that, but you can see your primary node. You can see your secondary node there. Uh, you can click on each of the nodes, it tells you all about them, including the serial numbers, which is pretty good. You've got my Wi-Fi on there. You can see what connected devices, so you can see my iPhone, for example. 
you've got settings, so you've got your wireless settings, you can change the details there. You can do a guest network, which is turned off, parental control, you've got settings, you've got uh, QoS, you've got add another Nova, you've got fast roaming, and quite a few different things on there, including port forwarding, using it as DN uh, changing DNS, firmware updates, and maintenance schedules. A lot of these options are going to depth on another review, what we did of this product a little while ago, which was the free pack which I'll link that up at the top right hand corner uh, so you can see a bit more information about it. Uh, but basically is, you've got all the settings there you need to change uh, things if you really wanted to and you can monitor basically what's going on, tell you your usage, so how much upload, download speed is and everything like that. Here's some basic tests we did of the Tender Nova. As you can see from the test results, when running on LAN and the Nova, the speeds were very similar. But when using the built-in BT Home Hub's Wi-Fi and the Virgin Business Media as built-in Wi-Fi as well, the speeds were drastically slower. And that's from roughly a distance of two rooms across and one floor up from the main hub.